keep it keep it simple because there's so many directions you could take like you could you could do like scoring too or like a yeah. community of, of people like working together or um, yeah. we're going to talk a little bit about that too it's from like the 80s osmosis jones i think that's it you guys should watch it yeah it's a really good movie <laughs> but it's it's kind of fun like that like similar to like I mean, this kind of goes a little more science-y than like going into your body, but just an idea. Well, I personally like the osmosis challenge form because I have a feeling you could do so much with it. Like, you have the whole entire body, and there's, you could put a lot of stuff into it. You could have different levels, several levels. What do you think? Too much, too much information. Okay. Yeah, but maybe you start off with this one first, and you say, "There's this." Okay, so there's this bad guy, Dopamini, mm -hmm. who's traveling around, and he's dropping these bridges. Well, you know what you should do is get a close-up picture of just one of the toothpicks or the, the tongue depressors, whatever those things are. So you could say, you know, he's going around and he's dropping it, and he's blocking, you know, the neuron. Okay. Okay, he's blocking the axon. Do you have a camera? No. And then start off with that guy. I think compared to some of the other games, ours had two players challenging each other, um, which made it a little bit more interesting because you're working against somebody else. And so therefore, um, it's just not only what you do, but what the other person is doing too. Yeah. It was also, we had a roll of the dice, which made it kind of random too. So you think that you could get someplace yeah. and then you can't because you don't roll the right number on the dice. What else do you think was good about ours? We um, had a bad guy. Everybody yeah. wanted to be the bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> See, we had like, I don't know, I felt like our game was more like by chance and like it wasn't like solving one puzzle. It could be different each time you play, so. Yep. And like, yeah, so the bridges, the blocks moved every time, so you didn't know where they were going to be. You also had to make decisions, right? Yeah. Because some people to chose size. to get more bonus points, and some people chose to they, they just get rid of the bridge. They getting the bonus points. Yeah, they, yeah, some people like getting the bonus points, for sure. It actually really excited me because I'm an anatomy and physiology teacher, and when I found out we were going to Boston Children's Hospital, and we were going to be um, meeting real researchers and scientists and doctors. I thought that was very cool. Yeah. And I know my students would love to um, have, take a field trip into Boston Children's and see what we got to see that one day. So I thought that was really great. Cool. They, they, for me, it was really, really impressive. And I could kind of figure out everything they were talking about. So I felt really good <laughs> because they were talking pretty high level. And, um, and I did understand a lot of it, and I could see how I would use a lot of the things they were talking about in my classes, so that was really cool. The setting is in Humania, but there are several villains who are trying to destroy Humania with several diseases and infections of some sort. So what the main character, Stem, has to do is he has to transform into his alter egos, depending on the system he's in, and defeat the bad guys. So. I envisioned, we envisioned STEM to be like some sort of video game such as Assassin's Creed where you don't have certain levels, you just have a dynamic map that changes based on the challenges you do. The first goal of the game is to get a nerve impulse to travel from the top over there down to the other end. So the goal you have to, Neuro has to um, move all these blockages that Dopamini has put up to try to get the nerve impulse to pass through. So what is going on is you have to use ATP points to use the energy to break the barriers and get the nerve impulse to travel through. But while you're doing this, dopamine keeps putting up these new blockages, so it makes it more difficult. And there's dopamine with the putting up blockages for you to knock down. So here's the nerve impulse is represented by the pebbles and they're constantly firing one at a time but once it comes upon this it can't pass so neuro has to use energy to knock it down and this five right there is um, a mitochondria where if you're running low on energy you can go to the mitochondria and get energy to um, continue to knock down barriers 
So what this is, is in the nervous system, impulses only travel one way, and we represent this in our game by having the impulse only travel one way. So here we have um, Neuro, who gets the ATP, and then using that their um, ATP points can knock down the bridges and get the impulse to travel through. And there's also this other option, um, like a lot of games, where you can have um, kill dopamine and get points for it, but you have to find that balance of breaking down the bridges and um, stopping him so that the nerve impulse can travel through in a set amount of time. How many nerves do I need to accomplish this task? Oh, well, yesterday when I was like, oh, I know. Devin. Well, you see, when the impulse, it gets sent up one way on the nerve, but then it has to get sent down on another nerve because the impulse can't go both ways. So you have to have one, two nerves. Wow, that's great. I guess, Devin, you must have stayed up all night studying. <laughs> you yeah. are a great student. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let me see if there's another question. If anyone else knows the answer. Uh, if there's a nerve impulse coming from my brain, is it guaranteed to get there? Or is anything able to stop that impulse from going from my brain to my hand? You can have a dopamine blocker. Okay, where'd you hear the word dopamine? We haven't learned about that yet. You already seem to know it. You're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Nervous breakdown. I really, really enjoyed that game, and I think that that's our competition. Um, they, they had a great idea. It was easy to play. Um, you could play without, know, without knowing anything about the nervous system. The directions were clear, um, the goals were clear, okay, and you so could see how it could be travel. leveled and, it, and um, more increasingly more difficult for um, somebody who's not a beginner game player. So. I'm wondering if that's what they mean by unconscious learning. Nervous breakdown. Um, you know, you're not just memorizing a fact, but you're seeing it from really, this perspective really that, that allows you to go deeper, but you don't even know. Nervous breakdown. You know, your roots are growing, but your hair would stand it's not really a conscious effort. Oh, I have to memorize this for a test. Nervous breakdown. Well, nervous breakdown was on Vesh's idea. So this one came up, and we were really confused in the beginning. We're like, oh my gosh, what if we do this? What if we have aliens and all this like random stuff we were doing? But then like all of a sudden we just got on track. Well, I'm not trying to take all the credit, but I think I have the basic ideas, and I like the sketches I made of the characters. So I think that's what I brought to the team. We worked really well together, and we all kind of um, came up with our own ideas, and then when we brought it together, we um, kind of inspired each other to... Um, come up with something really good. When we finished the game, like the nervous breakdown part, we were just sitting there and then we are saying, okay, how can we build upon this? How can we make this and how can we sell it? And then all of a sudden, I guess we all had this, we all had the same idea at the same time about Osmosis Jones and how a character travels to the human body and he solves all these crimes and stuff. So I just had a vision in my head. I think we all had a vision in my head. It's some sort of 3D <laughs> game where you go around defeating bad guys and stuff. So I think we just built upon that, and it was a great job. We did a great job. What was the question? I missed the question.
So there's the single and double, different colors and shapes. Okay. Only when they drop this one, Would it, it hooks into up? those two. Okay. And then they can like they can change the speed that these are moving around. And so, so when these, these are two, moving? when these get the right position from each other, they can drop okay. that on it so and that's link them. And then the cell, when that gets linked, the cell divides. Okay, that's exactly what Devin had. She had it um, where these things are moving around. So maybe yeah. in the beginning, the first version, there's only one shape, but you got to line them up. And then she had drop like this little thing, guy. Yeah, right, so does that look good? Them. Like you have a little guy there yeah. and he would drop the thing yeah. down. Perfect. And then she had that, a little line would be drawn yeah. and those would split. So the idea is they're discovering it has to be the right shape, and there are some things that there that don't match, some things here that don't match. Right, and then the you right have to line those and up. And they have to be a double. Has okay. To be a double. Okay, so it, the, the thing that they're dropping is already a particular shape, yeah. and you have to make those line up to match it. Is when, that right? When they line up, then you drop it, and it locks them Okay, in. so these are moving at random, right. and yeah. when they and when do they line up, you, up, you know thing. that shape's going to fit. Okay, and then the next yeah. shape that comes up is something different, and then you have to wait for those to move around, and you do it again.